In today's Health Watch, concern over romaine lettuce tainted with E. coli is growing. The number of illnesses have jumped and more states have been hit by that outbreak. CBS chief medical correspondent Dr. John LaPook joins us now. Thanks for being with us this morning. So everyone thought romaine lettuce, geez, it's so healthy, right? right? So what, do, what is the best advice yeah. for people who love their vegetables, in particular salads? The romaine lettuce. I know it's been tough because uh, this has been a huge problem. There have been 84 people hospitalized. Nine of those had a, a form of kidney failure. This this involved 19 states, uh, and it gave diarrhea, cramps, uh, blood in the diarrhea, and this rare form. And again, and about nine people had this this kidney failure. So uh, it's been very frightening. And what we've been telling people is, if you cannot be certain that the lettuce did not come from uh, this area, Yuma, Arizona, that you should just throw it out. So where does that leave us right now? Well, the good news is that the, the winter lettuce is from Yuma, Arizona, but the summer lettuce looks like it's coming from California. And uh, as far as we know right now, the California lettuce is not affected. Uh, still, people need to make certain uh, that it did not come from Yuma, Arizona. And if they can't be sure that, that it did not come from there, you got to toss it. All right, so toss the, salad. toss the salad. I was just going to say. So I have to ask you, though, doctor. So at, at some point, though, this has to end. So how do people know when it has to end? Is it going to come from the grocery stores? Is it a month? Is it, you know, coming from the companies? At what point can we start buying romaine again? I think when we when it's switched over to California supply. Now that's already starting to happen, and you'll be able to ask the store and say, "Where did this come from?" I think people in the past, if you had gone up to the store owner and said, "Where's this lettuce from?" they might have looked at you like, "You know, what are you talking about?" But now it's been such a huge thing, and people it's affecting sales. So people need to know that, and people have the right to demand that. So I think you wait till you know it's not coming from Arizona, and then I think it's probably okay to go ahead and give it a try. All right, switching gears here now. We finally hit some warmer temperatures here in Chicago, and that means that. Flowers and trees are blooming, of course, which also means those allergies. So is the late start to spring good or bad for allergy sufferers? And what can we expect this year? Well, it's hard to have a crystal ball about this, Marissa. Uh, and if you look in the literature about uh, climate change and, uh, and uh, global warming, it does seem like the seasons, the allergy seasons, are getting longer. What's going to specifically happen in any one year, it's hard to know. But one of the things that can happen, because the spring allergies tend to be from trees, you can delay it. They're all waiting there to, to have the pollen go, and they can all kind of go at once, and boom, you get this burst of pollen, sure. uh, and it can really hit you like a ball out of fire. I do have a, a clinical pearl about it, though, which is um, when you go outside and you're in the park, the pollen can get in your hair. And then when you go, and in your clothes, and when you go back inside, you really should take off your clothes and, uh, and take a shower take because shower. otherwise sure. the, the hair can be a source of pollination of your whole body. Right, right. And really quick before can, we go, do you want to say hi to your son in, uh, at Northwestern? <laughs> Hello, Noah at Northwestern. He's in a play in Decent in the fall, and I hope you're watching. There you go. Thanks, Doc. Good to see you. Thanks, Marissa.